the podcast room, we're gonna be putting a suspended ceiling in. I'm gonna show you all the relevant things that you need to put a suspended ceiling on. So the first things that you have to purchase are the perimeter edges. Now this is an L shape, they're doing in different lengths and different widths. This is one they had in stock at the moment. The other thing is they do a T-bar. Now the T-bar comes in different lengths. The rule with T-bars, when you run them, you run them at 1200 centers, which I'll go through later in the actual installation of the suspended ceiling. We've then got a 1200 bar, okay? We've then got a 600 bar. And what happens in this ceiling, what we're gonna be doing is putting 600 acoustic panels in because obviously being a podcast, we want the sound to be absorbed. You can probably tell it. it's a bit echoey in here at the moment and obviously we're gonna now work towards doing that. Okay guys, so the first thing we do is we decide how much we're gonna drop the suspended ceiling. Now I've got to talk about this laser level because this laser level is so cool. Now this is Pete's laser level. I've got a Stabila and I actually think I prefer this because it's battery operated, so you can charge up. You don't have to go and buy batteries, because my Stability one's really good, but it's really, really old. But the great thing about this, it's just a really, really good laser level. And the thing I really love about it is this bracket system that comes with it. Magnetics on the back here. You can just plug it in like that, and you can just move it up and down as you need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'll switch this on, and we've decided that the drop from this ceiling here to the bottom of the L shape is gonna be three inches or 75 mil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I turn it on and I press the line, because obviously on lasers, you can get them in different crosshairs. You can get them vertical and horizontal, can't you? That's probably only about two inches, Pete. So what we're gonna do is just pull that down a little bit. Let's have a look. Boom, there you go, a little bit more. And we'll be there, Pete, won't we? Look at that, three inches. That's the beauty of these laser levels, because they sort of self-level, doesn't matter where I go around this ceiling now, that line will be perfectly in level. The only wall that we can do is this wall here because we've got this lovely, beautiful cladding going on this wall. The main big rails always go across the shortest span. This room is about four or five meters long by about three meters wide. So obviously the main big rails go across this way. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna find the center because all the panels are 600 by 600. There you go, that's 90 and a half. So I'm just, here you go, split the difference, there it is there. That's my center. So center, 90 and three quarter. 90 and three quarter, that's there, mate. Sweet, so that's my center, Pete, okay? So what we're gonna do now, now we've got that, we'll pull the perimeters up. Now we're gonna put this length up here, we're gonna put that length up there, and then we're gonna do the one behind you as well, guys. The laser's now here in the top of this channel. You see it? Beautiful laser. There you go. That's it, I'm in though, Pete, got it. The thing I love about suspended ceilings, they fly up. One thing I'll do, I will back these off a little bit. I want to make sure I'm coming 45 that way. So what I'll do is I'll make it nice and neat and 90 like that and just bend that off. Now the one thing is that distance there, I need to make sure it's 45. So what you can do is you can do it this way. You just get an off cut of that and then all I'm gonna do is just mark that with my pencil there so that it tells me that's where the 45 comes through, like that. Now the reason I've done that is because when I put this piece of L-shaped angle on, when I slide it through underneath here, so when you look at it, it'll look like a mitre. And that's how I've always been shown how to do them. Somebody out there might do it slightly different, but it's the way I've always been shown. So here we go. So we're gonna do the same process with this one up here. These little things here, they all supply these in bags, quantities of about 100. So what happens, we'll put a screw in here, put a bit of wire dangling down, tight around here, and then tight around the main big T-bar that we're gonna put up in a minute, guys. Okay, we're gonna cut the T-bars in first, then put the brackets in. So here we go, guys. Look at that, 
that. So that's the first one in. So what we're gonna do now is we're then gonna cut the next run. We want to make sure we're holding the weight of this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put an L-shaped bracket here and an L-shaped bracket here. And what we're then gonna do, we're just gonna tie it up nice and level and we're gonna use the laser coming through like this, touching this edge, which then we know is absolutely beautiful and level. Look, you see it there, all the way along this edge. see how a lazy level really makes life so much easier doesn't it guys so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some clips now That's so to there so what we're gonna do we're gonna clip a rail now into that one there yeah 1200 yeah look at that how cool is that, guys? There you go, that's another one. Boom. Clip that one in, straighten up. And then latch your tile, mate, look at that. at Woodpecker Flooring have kindly provided us with this. This is what we're going to put down. It is their Brecon Blanche Oak Planks. So this is a vinyl floor with an integrated underlay, so there's no need to lay any underlay down. It's a click system as well, so it's really, really easy to lay. So our floor is now hoovered, our area is clean, and now what we're going to do is lay out our boards. Before we start to cut or do anything like that, it's a good idea just to get everything laid out nice and easy, just to give you a bit of an idea about how things are going to lie across the room. The reason we do this is because obviously each room size is different and these boards are a fixed width, okay? So what you don't want to do is start from one end of the room, which in this case the manufacturer recommends starting from the longest side and working your way out of the room. If in this case we put a full plank here and work our way across, when we get to here, we have a cut. We've got our three mil packers down that side because the manufacturer recommends a three to five mil gap around the perimeter of the room. So by doing that, we know that this is where the planks are gonna run. They're gonna get over to this side and we're gonna end up with this here. So we're gonna to have to cut some of this off. So what we're gonna do to remedy that, just to even the room out slightly, is we're gonna take 10 mil off that side, off that first run of planks, which is gonna shift the whole floor across and give us a more even plank on either end of the room. It's just gonna improve the overall feel and make it look a lot better. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna go outside into the separate room. We're gonna get our plunge saw set up and we're gonna run four of these boards down just so we can start our first run off and then get the rest of the floor down. So we've got our first two rows in. What we have done is just put some weight down on there just to stop anything sliding around. Because this floor isn't actually fixed to the floor, it relies on being clipped together. We don't want it to move around. So just to make our lives easier, we just put a bit of additional weight onto there so we can now just continue without any worry of that moving around. Because if it does move, it can cause gaps in between the boards, which obviously you don't want.
guys, that's it. The floor is down, it has been laid, and hopefully you agree, it looks epic. I'd just like to give a massive thanks to the guys at Woodpecker Flooring. It is awesome and we're really, really pleased with it and hopefully you are too. It's going to match in lovely with our tables, chairs and our shelving. Looks really nice. I'm impressed with that. It's cool. We've been working in collaboration with James Hardy Cladding, who have kindly supplied this cladding for our tall wall. You've just seen me install it. It was my first time in installing it, and I have to say it's a fantastic product to work with. It's really easy to install, and I also like the fact that the repeat pattern is one in seven. So across this whole wall, you can hardly notice that they're a moulded board at all. It really looks natural. Yeah.